So, Fun Sock Friday, the 5th of February, okay? Coming off a of snow day here. Geometry, you guys will be able to solve ratios and proportions, section 6.4, okay? So, what is a ratio, okay? So, this is, uh, it looks kind of like patio, the way the words are kind of smushed together. But it's ratio, okay? A ratio is a comparison of two or more. Quantities. So you're comparing two or more quantities, numbers, together. Yeah, Kenny. What the acorn statement grew up? Gee, I'm a tree. No. It's a tree. They don't speak. <laughs> of course, of course. Good call, good call. All right. <laughs> ways to represent a ratio, okay? You can represent it in three different ways, we'll see. You can have as a fraction. You can have it as, in words, A to B, A over B. You can have it as a colon, A colon B. Now, our most common one's actually going to be the third one. Okay, yeah. the third one's actually our most common one we're going to use and see um, for ratios. And all three of these are read in the same way, A to B. So the middle version is just written out. Okay, but these are all three read in the same way, A to B. And ratios can and should be simplified at all times. So you see how the first one's written in a fraction, okay? And you would simplify a fraction, same idea. Kenny, put it away. Thank you. All right, so a music store has 40 trumpets, 39 clarinets, 24 violins, 51 flutes, and 16 trombones in stock. Write each ratio in simplest form. So if you want to care, compare the number of trumpets to the number of violins, how many trumpets are there? 40. So you would say 40, and we're going to do the colon one. And then what number would I put next? 24. 24, haha, because 40 trumpets to 24 violins. But yeah, we can simplify this one, right? Simplify it down to like 10 to 6. Okay. What goes into both 40 and 24? This is our question we have to ask. Okay. 4 goes into both. Okay. Does a bigger number go into both? 8 goes into both. Okay. If you, if you um, divide them both by 4, would you have to do it again? Yes. Yeah, you would, okay? But if we do it by 8, we might not have to. So how many times does 8 go into 40? 5. And how many times does it go into 24? 3. 3. So this becomes 5 to 3. So for every 5 trumpets, there are... 3 violins. 3 violins. For every 5 trumpets, there are 3 violins. No, I don't. Okay. Oh, okay. Flutes to clarinets. Can somebody tell me what I would write for this one? Raise your hand if you can tell me what I would write for flutes to clarinets. Okay. Uh, let's go with uh, Gregory this time. 51 to 39. I agree. We would do 51 to 39. 51 flutes to 39 clarinets. Okay. Now you'd say, okay, well, can we simplify this one at all? Hmm. I think you can. I think you can. Three goes into both. Three goes into 51 how many times? Seems kind of sus. I don't know. 17. 17. What? It goes into 39 how many times? 13. 13. So for every 17 flutes, there are 13 clarinets. Let's go. Where are we going? Four clarinets. Again, Four. that's up to you. Trombone. Is it? Yeah. All right, all right. All right, I want you guys to try number three on your own. When you have it or have questions, raise your hand. So... Presley, what's it start off as? What to what? Very good. It starts off 16 trombones to 40 trumpets, okay? But we can simplify this as we noticed. What can we simplify this to? Uh, 2 and 5. Okay? 2 to 5. I think you can go, now, go 1 to 1.5. No, nope, if anything, it would be 1 to 2.5. We want to keep whole oh, yeah. integers there. Or we want to keep integers there, okay? So it becomes 2 to 5. Now, if you had simplified by something else, I saw maybe I saw a few people have like eight to twenty, or four to ten, and I said, "Oh, we have to go one more, though." Okay, Gregory. Uh, what was the like number to get uh, to the five? Great question. Um, so what goes in? So sixteen divided by what is two is our question. Eight. eight. Oh yeah. Yep. Yep. You're good. Okay, uh, Tyler. Okay, okay. So let's look at the next one, okay? We have violins to total instruments. Okay, that's a different category. We do we see a category that just says total instruments? No, because I need to do some math. 
No, we're going to need some math. What math do we think we're going to have to do for total instruments? Hold on, I have a question about that. Hold it, hold on. Okay, so for total questions, or total... Total instruments? Total instruments, would you even add the, the number that goes after the total instruments? Great question, great question, okay. So what do we think it might say if it didn't want us to add, us, add in the violins? All instruments except violins. All instruments except violins or all other instruments, something like that, right? So does it say that? No. No, so this leads me to believe that it is, in fact, the all the instruments including violins. Okay, that's what it leads me to believe, okay? So how many violins are there? 24. 24, haha. Is it that funny? Oh, it is. Not, no, it's not 25, but, you know, still pretty funny. All right, how many total instruments do we think there are? 170. I think there's 146 if we don't count violins. Yeah. Hey, Sierra. So it's 24, haha, uh -huh, to 170. 24 violins out of the 170 total instruments. Now, can we simplify this? I think we can simplify this. What goes into both 24 and 170? Two, okay? They're both even. 12 to 85. And believe, me, believe it or not, these two are mutually prime, which means that they, nothing goes into both of them. They don't have any common factors. Okay, I'm not saying that 12 is prime. I'm not saying 85 is prime because neither of those numbers are prime. They're called mutually prime. Mutually means they're shared, okay? So they don't, they don't have any common factors. So out of every 12 instruments, excuse me, 12 out of every 85 instruments are violins. Questions on that? All right. So now we have these things called extended ratios. So you know how I said a moment ago ratios could be two or more quantities? Okay. Well, extended ratio is just saying it's going to be a comparison, but more specifically, it's of three or more. So an extended ratio is when you take your ratio and you extend it. Okay, and so instead of being two or more, this one's specifically three or more. So it's still a type of ratio, it's just a more specific type. Saying, hey, we extended it. Extended ratios are written as A to B to C. I think I've done something like this before. You might have. And it's called the kind of series. No. No. No, we actually do this ratio for Now, biology. you might wonder, well, why don't we do fractions? Is that very easy to understand right there what's going on? No, no we like to avoid that when we can. All righty. So these first two actually aren't going to be using extended ratios, but they're going to warm our brain up for using some extended ratios, okay? The ratio of two complementary angles is 3 to 7. Wait, 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 back up. Complementary angles. What's that mean? Oh. Close. 90. Oh, 90. Yeah, it's 90. Okay, let's look at this poster over here, okay? This poster of mine, Tyler. Angle A and angle B are complementary angles. Angle B says, I like that you're a good friend. Angle A says, I like the way you always help me. They're complementing each other. How great is that? All right. So the ratio of two complementary angles is 3 to 7. Now, do we think the angles are actually 3 degrees and 7 degrees? No. Would they add the 90 if that was the case? Yeah. No, they would add the 10. No. No. If they were 3 and 7 degrees, they'd only add the 10, thus they wouldn't be complementary. Uh -huh. Well, if this is a ratio, what, what were the numbers probably before? Probably bigger, right? Yeah. And then what happened to those bigger numbers? They were simplified, right? Yeah. Now, how do you simplify something? How do we simplify from 16 and 40 to 2 and 5? You... You divide it by a specific number. Now, it's the same number for both numbers, right? Yeah. You divide it by the same thing for both numbers. So if we were to go back maybe from 2 and 5 to 16 and 40, could we do some math maybe like, oh, I don't know, 2x to 5x and figure out what that would be? Because it's the same thing, right? If we wanted. Well, that's what we're going to do here. Because 3 plus 7 isn't 90, but 3x plus 7x will add up to our 90. Because we know they have to divide by the same thing to get down to 3 and 7, which means they have to multiply by the same thing to get back up to whatever they add up to be 90. Does that make any sense or no? Yeah. Okay. 
So we pulled the 3 and 7 from the ratio, and we said, okay, well, they're going to multiply by the same number to get back up to where they were. So we just called it x. You can call it anything. But x is just the most common. So what would I do at this point in our algebra? Add your 3x. Yeah, combine those like terms and get 10x. 3x plus 7x is 10x equals 90. Now what? Divide by 10. Divide by 10. x is? 9. 9. So we know we can multiply both these numbers by? 9. 9. So what are the two angles here? 27 and 63. Okay, 27 degrees and 63 degrees. I think we're off on our multiplication a little bit. All right, 27 and 63. So if we add 27 and 63 degrees, do we get 90? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So that's good. That's good. <laughs> it didn't ask that, no. It's the way we can check our work, but it didn't ask that. Oh. Maybe not. All right. Questions on number five. So what do we think might happen on number six here, okay, where we have the ratio of two supplementary angles is four to one. Find the measure of both angles. E to 4x plus 7x equals... What? That's a one. Okay. And Seth said, Seth, what number do you think they're going to add up to this time? Why 180? Because they're supplementary. Some inner angles add up to 180. Now, could I just call 1x x? Yes. Okay, if you want to, can you call it 1x as well? Yeah. Sure, it really doesn't matter. <clears throat> Whatever floats your boat, so to speak. My All right. So, what do we do now to solve this equation? Uh, you add, four add 4x and x by combining our like terms and get 5x equals 180. <laughs> now, divide by 5 and x is 36. Now are we done there? No. No, we have to multiply both of the 4 and the? 1. one. Now, do we really have to multiply by 1? No. No, okay. So we know one angle is going to be 36 degrees. What's the other angle? 144. Okay, 144 degrees. And what do they add up to? 180. 180 because they're supplementary. If they don't add to 180, what do you think happened? Uh, you messed up. Probably did something wrong. Okay. Kenny. So you're always asking us if we have any questions. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. When I do, though, I'll ask them, though. Thanks for asking, though. All right. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right. Number seven. Now we're going to start using these extended ratios a little bit. The ratio of the measures of the angles of a triangle. Okay, what, do we, what, do we, what do we know about the angles of a triangle? They all add up to 180. That might be key here, okay? The ratio of these angles of a triangle is 4 to 7 to 9. Find the measures of the angles. So does anyone have an idea? Raise your hand if you have an idea of how we can solve this. Hi, Bree. Okay. Uh, Seth? Uh, you add all the numbers. Okay, 4 plus 7 plus 9? With X's. Oh, with X's. 4X plus 7X plus 9X equals 180. Because 4 plus 7 plus 9 will not get us... 180. 4x plus 7x plus 9x gives us 180, okay? We have to multiply all of them by the same number to get them back up to where they were. So we combine like terms. What's 4 plus 7 plus 9? Uh, 20. 20. Okay, it is 20x is equal to 180. Now what do we do? Divide, Divide by 20. X is, nine, X is 9. I think you're dividing by 10 there, buddy. Dude, I, don't know what I don't know, I don't know. Alrighty, so x is 9. So what do we know about each angle then? What are they? Uh, nine. Multiply by 9. Multiply by 9. Uh, 4x plus 3 times 9 is 36. Okay, so 36 degrees. 81 degrees. Then 63 and then 81. 63 degrees and 81 degrees. Alright, we're so eager. Yes. 36 degrees, 63 degrees, and 81 degrees. And if we were to add those up, we should get? 180. 180. 180. If we don't, we did something wrong. Questions on that? No, All right, I want us to do number eight on our own. When you have it or have questions, raise your hand. Who wants to walk me through this one? All right, Elizabeth, go ahead. Very good. 11x plus 2x plus 5x equals 180. Kevin, can you explain why that's what you do?
Why 180? Yeah, because all three angles in a triangle add up to 180, okay? Now, Bailey, why aren't we just saying 11 plus 2 plus 5? Why do we have the X's there? Exactly. Right. All of them are going to multiply by the same number, even though we don't know what it is yet. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll get there in a moment. But eleven plus two plus five x. Okay. Ends up being eighteen x equals one eighty. And we divide both sides by eighteen. So one eighty divided by eighteen is ten. Now here, do we need to find all three angles? Yes. What's the instruction say? Find the measure of the largest angle. Well, I found What's the largest angle? Which one is it going to be, the 11, the 2, or the 5? The Probably the 11, right? The biggest number. So 11 times 10 is? Uh, under 10 degrees. That's your answer. Could you go back and find the other ones to check your work? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure, 22 degrees, 55 degrees. No, it's only 20. Excuse me. 20 and 50. I was multiplied by 11. 20 degrees and 50 degrees. And they do add up to 180. But the only one we need is 110 degrees because that's what the instruction asked for. Be very, very careful to read our instructions, okay? Read yep, that'll do you. All right. Any questions on number eight? No. All right, let's look at number nine. Okay. The ratio of the measures of the sides of a triangle. Whoa, are we doing angles right now? No. We're doing sides, okay? Two to eight to nine. If the perimeter of the triangle is 76 inches, find the length of each side. Okay, wait, what's perimeter mean? It means all the way around. Okay, it means the distance around the figure. So how do you get perimeter mathematically? Add all of them. Add all of them what? Add all, 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 all the numbers and then... All the numbers, even the angles? No. 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 We add all the sides, right? Add all the sides to get perimeter, okay? So can somebody help me with what my equation might be here? Okay, Gregory. 2x plus 8x plus 9x equals 76. Very good. 2x plus 8x plus 9x equals 76. Once again... Just like with the angles, 2 plus 8 plus 9, 19 does not equal 76. But if you have the x's on there, now we're getting back up to what our ratio originally was before it was simplified. So we end up getting 19x is equal to 76. Divide both sides by 19. And what's x? No, no. X is 4. Can I use my calculator? Yeah. Did you say to you here that Correct. That's what I'm it just like says, like, yep. in like fine print at the top, you cannot use a calculator. Yeah, you need a microscope. Yeah, like a microscope to find it. Yeah, no, in Algebra 1, um, so like Gregory had me in Algebra 1 last year, and I don't allow calculators in Algebra 1 because I'm a big fat jerk. But in geometry, I don't allow them. So, um, anyway, so what, what do we do now that we know x is 4? What was that? Multiplication, what are we going to multiply 4 by? We're going to use all the x's and put 4. Okay, so we're going to plug 4 in for the x and find each individual side, right? So, Billion, what's one of the sides? 8. Okay, 8, what? 8 ostriches? 8 quesadillas long? 8 inches long. Okay, what's our next one? 32? 32 dog ears? 32 inches. And what's the last one? 36? Inches. How long would be the quesadilla? I don't know. It depends on the quesadilla. Are we just using the singular one? Yeah, we're using a single tortilla or is it a double tortilla? Exactly, exactly, okay? Yeah. Uh, I have a question for number nine. So, like, what if the two smallest angles uh, wasn't bigger than the the two small sides weren't bigger than the biggest side, then it wouldn't be a triangle and the problem would fall apart, right? Yeah, so would we have to Not a triangle? Yeah. So, um, so Gregory's asking a good question here. Hey, Mr. Carlson, we learned last section, and we did in our warm today, that the two small sides have to add a two bigger than the third side. What if that didn't happen here, though? A plus 32 is 40, and it's better than 36. What if we had numbers that weren't bigger than the third side? Do we have to answer differently? Do we still do the same thing? What do we do? Okay. Um, we, at, we won't have a problem like that, just so you know. We will not have a problem like that. There won't be a tricky one on there on here like that. Um, in that scenario, you'd probably say, um, here would be the side lengths, but they can't form a triangle. So you'd probably still give the answer and just say, but it doesn't work anyway, kind of a thing. Um, if that were to happen, which we won't have happen, though.
Yeah, I love that you're thinking of that though. Yeah, good luck. He just puts it on the test anyways. <laughs> Psych. Okay. Does anyone s- um give me give me a quick thumbs up, thumbs down for how you're feeling about it. You can hold it close to your chest if you want, but I wanna see some sort of response, okay? Billy, I wanna see some sort of response, okay? Okay. Let's continue on. We're gonna skip number ten. All right. What is a proportion? Okay. A proportion. Yep. Going to our last page of these notes. Okay. Of this section. Excuse me. A proportion is an equation that states two ratios are equal. So we have two ratios, and we say they're equal. Can I what, Kenny? You know what data test is now? No. All right. A proportion is written as. A to B is equal to C to D. This time, we're going to most commonly write it as fractions. Okay, it's going to help us out a lot better under, um, understand what's going on when we write them as fractions. All right. Now, let's dive in and look at number 11 here. 4 over X is equal to 2 over 7. Yep, yeah, we'll get to that in a moment. I'm going to come back to that. 4 to x is equal to 2 to 7. So we have to figure out what would x be for this to work out. Now, before anyone blurts, okay, mathematically, algebraically speaking, how we would solve this is we need to get x out of the um, denominator, and we probably want to get 7 out of the denominator as well, okay? So we would multiply both sides by x over 1, because now what happens mathematically is x and x simplify, so on the left-hand side, we're just left with 4. Then we have 7x. On the right side, we're left with 2 times x over 7. You multiply the numerators together. 2 times x over 7. So now, in our quest to get x by itself, we would now multiply both sides by 7, or 7 over 1, and get 28 is equal to those 7. Simplify 2x. Any questions on how we got here? Okay. Do we want to do we want to go back and recap how we got here? No cap. No. Okay, no cap. Okay, no cap recap. Okay. So from here, we would solve by dividing by 2. And what's x? 14. So if x is 14, this ratio or this proportion works out. And if you back it up to the original, 4 over 14 is equal to 2 over 7. Does that make sense to us or no? Yeah. Well, what is 4 compared to 2? What is 4 compared to 2? 2 is half of 4. <coughs> 2 is half of 4. So what about 14 and 7? Seven? Seven. Do they share a relationship like that? Seven. Yeah, 7 yeah, is half of 14. So does that kind of make sense? You could multiply from 2 to 4 by 2. 7 to times 2 is 14. So the bottom is 14 there. Now, what we did mathematically, once again, was we multiplied both sides by the denominator of one side, and we multiplied both sides by the denominator of the other, right? So we have this cross product property, property, which is essentially what we did. This is just going to be kind of like a shortcut, so to speak, to where we cut out one step here. We just still do all the same math, but we're just going to cut out one step of writing it. So for any proportion, you have A times D is equal to B times C. So if you look up here, going back to the A over B is equal to C over D, it's like you take that and you go diagonally. A and D are diagonal, so they're going to multiply together. B and C are diagonal, so they're going to multiply together. So if we look at that, that's actually what we ended up doing on this problem. We ended up taking 4 times 7 and got 28. We took x times 2 and got 2x. Questions on that? It's just a different way of stating what we did. And we call it the cross product because we are crossing diagonally across the equal sign. And it's product because we're multiplying. So on number 20, on number 12, excuse me, I was about to say number 22. On number 12, 19 over 10 is equal to x over 12. How would we cross multiply that one? 19 times 12. 19 times 12. Okay, is what? 220? 
So we have 19 times 12, which is 228. What are the other numbers we're going to multiply together? X and 10, 10 times X. And that's going to give us 10X on the other side of the equal sign. So notice we kind of just jumped some of this math we did earlier in the green and pink, didn't we? We still end up at the same spot, but now we don't have to write all of that out. Do we like that a little bit more maybe? Yeah. Okay. If you do, great. Keep doing that. If you don't, we'll go back to what we did before. Gregory. So it's 10X. So if we're trying to find X, is 10X the answer or would it be the multiple? Great question. So we always want to get X by itself, so we would divide. And we get X to be what? 22.8. 22.8. Now in our first one, number 11... Could we probably have guessed here that this would be 14 after we look at it for a bit? Because, oh, double 2 to get 4, double 7 to get 14. Could we have done that very well with number 12? No. Not with a decimal, probably not. Okay, So it's still important that we know how to do these for when we get stuff like that. Question on that. Yep. So how would we do that on 13? How would we do that on 13? Elizabeth? Can you do, like, leave x out and take negative 1 times the Great question. So when we multiply it, if we were to go the long way, don't write this part out, but if we were to go the long way and multiply both sides by, like, maybe 19 over 1, would we do 19 times x, 19 times negative 1, or 19 times both? 19, 19 times both. You'd have to distribute it. So that's what we're going to have to do as we cross-multiply. So sometimes it's helpful for us to write this out and say 19 parentheses x minus 1. So that way we don't forget to distribute it. Okay? Sometimes that can be helpful for us to write out so we, do, so we remember to distribute it. And then the other direction, we do 6 times 13. You know, know what we get there? 78. All right, now we would distribute. 19 times x is 19x. 19 times negative 1 is negative 19 equals 78. Now, if you're comfortable with it, could you skip the step in the, um, in the orange that I wrote here? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you could just go down to where I was in the green by distributing. But if you're worried that, hey, you know what? I might make a mistake if I do that. I know myself well enough to know I might make that mistake. That might be some of us in here. Okay. Well, then feel free to write that step in. All right, from here, we would add 19 to both sides. Nineteen X is equal to 97. Divide both sides by 19. Is it? I think I called it 5.1, 5.12. We can round it to one or two spots. It doesn't really say. Um, so because it just keeps going forever, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. We can just call it 5.1 and be okay with that. Yeah, Quentin. So these questions, they could be in a decimal? Yep. Decimal? Yes, they can. So, uh, One second. Gregory. Like that are equal to each other? Yeah. The big thing here is you have a fraction equal to a fraction. Okay. Whenever you have two fractions equal to each other, you cross multiply. That's the big thing is that there's an equal sign between them. So it's not like the fractions are normally multiplying, but this is the math that ends up happening when we go the long way anyway. Hey, Corny. Okay. So we went the long way and did the same thing. This is just a shorter way of looking at it, but it's still the same math. William. Um, I suppose you could leave your answer as 97 over 19 because it doesn't simplify because 19 is prime. Um, but 
Um, I would encourage us to leave it as a decimal in this case. If I, and then look for the instructions to say more specifically, because sometimes it might say round to this many decimal places, um, in which case then you would absolutely need to have it as a decimal. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, great question. All right, let's look at number 14. Can anybody help me with how I do this one? No, because I don't know how to do it. Hey, Gregory. 5x plus 4. Ooh, not quite. So 5x plus 4, you multiply the 5 and the x, but you forgot the... Oh, whoops. 5x plus 4. Very good. So remember how I was saying a moment ago, it might be good for us to write this orange step before we distribute. That's exactly why, because sometimes we forget to multiply to the second thing. Okay, 5x plus 20 equals 17 times 19. What is 17 times 19? 323. 323, all right. Tristan, what would you do now? Um, we have to do one more thing before we divide by 5. I can't hear you. Not add 5x. What number is with the 5x? Um, 5x plus 20 equals 323. So what are we going to do with that plus 20? Subtract it. So we're going to subtract by 20. So we end up getting 5x is equal to 303. We're probably going to end up with a fraction, right? It's going to be a decimal. Divide both sides by 5. 64.6. Do you have a calculator on there? No. Is it 64.6? I got 62. Okay, let's go back to 60.6. That sounds more right to me. Yeah. No, I did. I did. That would do it. All right. So we got 60.6. And it does terminate. The decimal does end. All right. Anyone still have questions or need these first four? Yeah, Billiam. No, no, I still need it. Okay, cool beans. All right, continuing on then. Um, let's skip number 15. Let's go on to 16. All right, who can help me set up number 16? Okay. Okay, go ahead, though, anyway. Sure. Okay. So 18 is going to multiply with all 3x plus 4. Okay, and how do you get 180? Yeah, 12 times 15 is 180. Okay. Yep, it's cross, cross multiply. It's the right phrase. All right, so what do we do with that 18? Don't, or excuse me, Kenny said it a moment ago, we're gonna do what? Multiply. Yeah, we're gonna distribute that 18, multiply that in there, okay? So 18 times three X is? 54X. Very good. And 18 times four? 72. Okay, so 54 X plus 72 equals 180. Minus 72. Okay, so now we subtract that 72, that's adding to both sides. 54 X is equal to 108. This one does work out nicely, yeah, because the divide by 54. And x equals 2. Now, if you plug it back in. Okay, I want to show you guys this. If you plug it back in, 2 times 3 is? Uh, 6. 6. 6 plus 4 is? Uh, eight. 10. So you get 12 over 18 compared to 10 over 15, okay? So we get 12 over 18. I'm going to write that over here. Compared to 10 over 15. Yeah. What goes into both 10 and, or excuse me, what goes both into 12 and 18? Uh, six. Six. Six goes into both. How many times? Uh, 
2 and 3. What goes into both 10 and 15? 2 and 3. Yeah. 5. 5. How many times? 3. 2 and 3. Did we get the same thing? Yes. Yeah, and they should, okay? So whether or not you simplify the fractions, or whether or not you go back through and just say divide, 12 divided by 18 in your calculator, get 0.6 repeating. 10 divided by 15 in your calculator, get 0.6 repeating. The two sides should be the same when you're done. So is there always a way you can check your work? Mm -hmm. Totally, okay? It's what? Yes, yes. Now, number 17. Whoa, this looks a little different, doesn't it? Hmm, seems kind of sus. What's different this time, Presley? Yeah, there's two, like, different uh, X's, right? Yeah, we see an X minus this and an X minus this, okay? Gregory, is that going to change what we do? No. No, what are we raising your hand for? I can tell you. Oh, please. Um, 18X minus 360. Okay. So to get that, Gregory, real quick, I'll, 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 cap, I'll recap what Gregory did there. Gregory did 18 times X and 18 times negative 20 to get 18X minus 360. Okay, Gregory, keep going. And then equals 3X minus 3. Very good. And Gregory did the same thing on the other side. 3 times X is 3X and 3 times negative 11 is negative 33. Gregory went ahead and just did that distributing um, at the same time he wrote it down. Questions on the setup? Okay. Now, have we seen an equation like this before? Yes, U minus 3x. Yeah, let's subtract the 3x. Let's get those x's together by moving the smaller one over. So 15x minus 360 equals negative 33. Okay, now what? Add 360. Okay, let's add 360 to both sides. Let's add a quick, a quick scope to that, 360 quick scope, you know. 15x is equal to 327. Divide by 15. No, by X. By X, ha. Uh, all right. What do we end up getting it to be? 21.8. 21.8, I agree. Very good, very good. Now, once again, if we were to plug this back in, our fraction should be equivalent. We get 1.8 over 3 is equal to 10.8 over 18. And if you were to put those in your calculator, you would get the same decimal. No. Yes. No, you. No. In a reverse. Okay? In a reverse. In a reverse. All right. Questions on that, guys? All right. Uh, 18. What's different on 18 compared to 17? They're in the denominator. Is that going to change what we do, though? No. No, literally one. Okay, we're going to skip that one. Okay. Let's look at these next two, okay? Uh, show of hands, how many of you guys remember talking about factoring before in Algebra 1? Uh, I do not remember. Okay? Okay? Okay, I see at least three people who had me raise their hands. That's good. Everyone else who had me should raise your hands because I, I know we at least talked about it. I remember talking about it. I don't remember it at all. Okay? Okay? Factoring, okay? We're going to do a quick recap of factoring on this because there are a couple problems in your homework that involve factoring. I have a feeling those are going to be the ones that come up next class, if I'm being honest. Okay? So on 19, we're still going to cross multiply. We're going to do 5 times 27. What would 5 times 27 be? Well, it would be 135. Are you sure? Yes. Prove it. Yeah, prove it. What did you say? 135? I said that's accurate. No, I, I did that wrong. <laughs> there we go. I your math was wrong. I was like, My math was wrong on the second side. I'm like, whoa. I did 5 times 3 and then add, and then add 3. That's 5 times 2. 135. The way I did that in my head was I said, well, 5 times 30, because 30 is close to 27, and it's easy to multiply with, 5 times 30 would be 150, because 5 times 3 is 15. Add the 0 back on 150. Well, it's going to be 3 fives less, so it's going to be 15 less, because 3 times 5 is 15. So I did 150 minus 15, not 135. Uh, I don't know. Jeez, big yeah, big brain time? I don't know. What do you say, Kenny? I mean, I got there quickly. Hey, you should write that out for us so I can get it in your head. Let me see it. Okay, like what I did? Yeah. All right, so in my head, this is what happened. I said, okay, well, 5 times 30, because 27 is close to 30, and 30 is easy to multiply with. Well, 5 times 3 is 15. Tack on to 0, 150. But it's not quite 30, it's 27. So I need to subtract... From that, I need to have 3 times 5 taken away. I need to have 3 5 taken away. So 3 times 5 is 15. Subtract the 2. 
135. So I picked <laughs> so I picked an easier number to multiply with and then just subtract it from there. That's actually normally how I do multiplication and division in my in division in my head, especially multiplication. Is I just pick an easier number and I go from there. Gregory. Okay. So then we cross multiply x minus 1 and x plus 5. I suggest writing these out. Okay, the other ones I said, hey, it's really your choice. And this still is your choice, but you're a lot more likely to mistake, make mistakes on this part if you don't uh, write it out. Jesus Christ, well, that's defensive. Is it? Yes. All right, so for this, does anyone remember FOIL? FOIL. Yeah, actually. Okay, do you remember what it stands for? Um, no, but First, I don't know. You know how to do it. Okay, good. What do we do here? First, outside, inside, left. Seth? I was calling on Kenny there, right? You would do... How would you do it in, um... We did... Okay, yeah. We wrote them all in a line, and then we would do 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we do 13, 14, 23, 24. Okay. Yep, yep. Yep, I get, I get what you're saying. How would that apply here? How would we use that here? Add or multiply? We'll multiply. Okay, so x times x is? 2x. So two x. X. Two. Two x. x squared. Uh -huh. x plus x is 2x. x times x is x squared. This one makes a lot of sense. Okay. Okay, then you would do the same thing with 1 and 14. Or, I mean, or 4, so you come out with um, x, 5x. 5x, okay. Because it's a positive x times a negative times a positive five. Now you move over to. I'll cover a different way to do it. You yep. Do Twenty-three, which would be one negative one times x. So negative x. And then you would do twenty-four, which would be uh -huh. uh, one <laughs> negative one <laughs> times or negative one times five. Yeah. So that could be one way we think about it. Um, I also want to talk about another approach. Okay where um, we call this one FOIL, okay? So FOIL, Seth, now I'll call on you. Thanks for remembering it. Seth, what does FOIL stand for? First, outside, inside, First, outsides, inside, and last. last. So for this, you say, what's the first thing in each parenthesis? X. X, X times X. X squared. X squared. What's the outsides of each parenthesis? Outside on the parentheses? X and five. X and five, five X. X. What are the insides? One and negative five. one and x, negative x. What are the last? Negative one and five, negative five. Do we get the same thing either way? We think same. about it? Yeah. Different ways to think about it, okay? Now, another way I like to think about it is you take, go through the first parenthesis, first parenthesis I'm going to multiply to everything in the next. Okay, I took care of this. Now you go on to the next thing, multiply to everything in the next. Oh, that's what we do in biology for, like, the hydrogen. Yep, so. yep, but yep. We don't, we don't do it like the one, two, one, two, three, four. We just do that. That's how popular show I'll say different different teachers teach it differently and there's not one right way. There's just different ways. Well, that's because it's easier to remember than like having to try and remember foil. Because some people it's a problem if you just remember 13, 14, 23, 24, it helps. Uh, and I'm happy it helps you. To me, that, that seems like it'd be more convoluted. We, we but foil. if it makes sense for you, awesome. I'm happy for that. I, I like it because I write uh, 13, 14 on the side. Yeah. Put next to it. Yeah. If if that's what works for you, I'm happy. I'm happy to hear that. I probably would do anyway. That's the first way I was Sure. Sure. Yeah. So we go from here. We get 135 is equal to x squared combined like terms. What's 5x minus x? 4x minus 5. So from here, we have a quadratic equation. That means we have a square. In the equation, quadratic equation, flashback to algebra one, okay, or math topics one, okay. Um, can I combine x squared and 4x? No. They're not like terms, Friday. different exponents, okay. What? Yeah, it's fun talk Friday. Uh, 
Gotcha. And I want lobster and crab, so I'm going to see if you can do a red lobster. We'll get some cheddar biscuits. <laughs> All right. How we have to solve this problem, guys, is we have to have it equal to uh, zero. So I'm going to subtract both sides by 135, so we have zero on one side of the equation. So right now I have zero is equal to x squared plus 4x minus 140. And so now we have to solve this quadratic equation that's equal to zero. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to create multiplication. Because when two things multiply to equal zero, what do we know about one of the things? They equal zero. It has to equal zero. For two things to multiply to get zero, at least something had to be zero, right? Yeah. Like five times something is zero. What's the something? Zero. Zero. It has to be zero. Okay? Or both of them could be zero. Zero times zero is zero. There's nowhere you can multiply and get zero and one of the things wasn't zero. It just can't happen. Okay? Like you can't take five times three and somehow get zero. I mean, you can, you're just wrong. <laughs> All right. So square. what we're going to do is we're going to factor. Okay? To factor, the way I teach it, once again, there's multiple ways. The way I teach it is I make an X. At the top of the X, I'm going to put A times C. At the bottom of the X, I'm going to put B. Where does A, C, and B come from? Well, A, B, and C come from... This being in the form of AX squared plus BX plus C. So, what is the number secretly in front of the X squared? One. one. So, A is one. What's the number secretly, or I mean, what's the number that's C? Negative 140. So, what is one times negative 140? Negative 140. You just do the number, the coefficients. And my B is what here? Four. So this is whatever's with the x. So I'm going to put that at the bottom. So now we have a little puzzle. Okay, we're going to finish off this x. For the puzzle, we're going to say what two numbers that we're going to put on the sides here would multiply to the top, add to the bottom. Four. Multiply to the top, add to the bottom. Okay. So if we're going to multiply to get a negative, what do we know about the numbers? Can they both be positive? No. Can they both be negative? No. no it has to be one of each. So if they're adding and it's one of each sign, what are they really going to do when you add with two different signs? Cancel out. You, no, you end up really subtracting. So you want two numbers that multiply to 140, but subtract to 4. Okay, so what are some multiples of 140? Uh, 10. 14 and 10. Okay, 14 and 10. Would that work? Yeah. Okay, which one's negative? Uh, the 10. The 10, because 14 has to be bigger to be positive. So now... What we do next is we say, okay, there is a shortcut, but I'm going to teach that another time. I'm going to do 0 is equal to, the first term is going to say the same. I'm going to leave x squared as x squared. I'm going to leave negative 140 as negative 140. The middle, though, 4x, is going to split into negative 10x plus 14x. Now, if we were to add back negative 10x and 14x, what would you get? Uh, 4x. 4x, like we had before, right? Mm -hmm. So is this blue equation equivalent to the equation we have up here in the orange? Yeah, yeah they're equivalent. Now, so why did we do that? Well, we'll see in a moment here. That's going to help us create factors. Billy, mm -hmm. Sorry, say that again, buddy. Yep, it has to be negative 10 and 14. This will not work unless you do those two numbers. Okay, it will not work unless it's those two numbers. Okay, um, you can always go to the right a little bit. Okay, um, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to group these first two things together and I'm going to group the last two things together. Because we did it. So I'm going to group them in parentheses. Now, x squared and negative 10x, what do those have in common? They They're GCF, so to speak. They have, an x. they have an x in common. So I'm going to factor out an x, and if I take an x out of that parentheses, I'm going to be left with x minus 10 because I took an x away from x squared and I took an x away from negative 10x. What do 14x and negative 140 have in common? 14. So I can take a 14 out, and I'm left with x minus 10. Hey, what do we notice about our two parentheses? They're, both They're the same. They're the same, x minus 10. So it has an x minus 10 in common for both of those. So what I do now is I actually take that x minus 10 and I put that out in front. So just like how I took the x from both and I wrote 1x, 
I took the 14 from both and I wrote 114. I wrote 14 once. I take the x minus 10 from both and I'm going to write it once. And I say, okay, what am I left with now? I'm left with x plus, 14. x plus 14. And I created multiplication. So what happened here is I created multiplication. I'm a wizard, okay? I'm a hairy wizard. I mean, I'm a wizard hairy, okay? So this creates multiplication that equals zero. So what do I know about either this first parenthesis or the second parenthesis? They both have x. Okay, but what do I know about one of them? What do they have to equal? One of them has to equal zero. One of them has to equal zero. For this to be true, either this part has to be zero times something or something times zero, right? Okay, so here's what we can do. We can say, well, it has to be zero. So we can say, well, let's figure out what will make it zero. So if I take x minus 10, the first parenthesis, and set it equal to 0, and I solve this equation by adding 10, adding 10, That's 10. if x is 10. Well, if I were to plug 10 in, would 10 minus 10 give me 0? Yes. So would this whole equation be true? Because 0 times something is? Yes. 0 times something is? Something. 0. 0 every time. And I do the same thing with the other parenthesis, x plus 14 equals 0. I subtract 14, and if x is negative 14, and I plug it in here, would negative 14 plus 14 be 0? Yes. Yeah, so we don't care what's in the other parentheses at that point. This one's 0. So will something times 0 give us 0? Yes. Yes, it will. If we were to go back into our original ratios, either one of these numbers, 10 or negative 14, would make it true. So we have two answers on this one. The reason why we have two answers was because we had a 2 as our biggest exponent for the x. That is a recap on factoring. Okay.